Explorers, mystery hunters, and botanists, Canon R&D has a new project and they need your help to complete it. The project in question is all about the documentation and mapping of the locations of the fungal life form known as brain trees. They are a strange fruit-bearing plant life that can survive non-atmospheric conditions and we'd like to begin to know more about these wondrous life forms. So if you spot any of these more boring and non-ambulatory aliens, please go to the reporting form linked on screen now to help fill out the database and begin to give us a clearer picture of what may well be the most widespread non-terrestrial life form in the galaxy. Canon Radio, solving the galaxy's mysteries one biscuit at a time. A good relative time part to you all. I'm Commander Larzok, and I have with us a special guest for this Canon Radio broadcast. We now join our illustrious founder, Dr. R. Canon, live via type beam from the Gnosis. Doctor, welcome back to the broadcast. We've taken special precautions this time after our last interview was cut short by despicable assassins who may have just been biscuit pirates. Anyway, so while you may want to keep it handy, the laser pistol shouldn't be needed this time. Thank you, Lazok. I'm glad to see you've recovered fully from our last outing. Yes, that caused quite a stir. The Thargoid sites are well documented now, but there's a lot of people wondering how you took me to one before they were discovered. To be honest, I'd kind of like an explanation on that one myself. I bet you would. Okay, well, down to business. Now, we've done a bit of setup for this interview by allowing the Canon faithful to ask some questions of you, Doctor, and it's quite a list, so let's just jump right on in here. From a dingo, the Lakeaneer, how did you get the name Canon? Hmm, I'm not too sure how to respond to that. Uh, make sure this guy isn't doing anything important investigation-wise. It might not be suited to his talents. All right, from Clarion Z, dear Dr. Arcanon, what are the dimensions for a perfect biscuit? I would never presume to limit the many forms of biscuit to a single set size or shape. Biscuits are very much like uh, music. It's all about finding the one that fits your mood. From Jonah Q, what do you suppose the link is between the Thargoids and the Guardians? Why would Guardian relics interact with Thargoid tech? These two species have clearly interacted in the past, so it stands to reason that their technology can uh, recognize each other. The seemingly hostile nature of the reaction we've seen no doubt tells a story. Ah, here's an oldie but a goodie from Andy Bish. What is the velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, presuming it's flying in a straight line, ballpark 20 meters per second. Next question. All right, Doc, we're going to do a mini section now based purely around questions from some guy called Aiden. Aiden provided us with 3,427 questions, so we've whittled that down to three. All right, the first one from Aiden. Can we denounce and hunt down canon members who show absolutely no regard for grammar, logic, order, authority, international or universal measurement standards, or personal hygiene? That's a uh, comprehensive list of sins. If you're referring to members who take at least one of those boxes, are you suggesting there should be nobody in the canon? Alright, here's the second one. In the spirit of the ancient fictional Klingon society, can we fight with superiors to the death in order to gain their title? Sure. I'm free this afternoon, but I would advise against making any firm plans for tomorrow. <clears throat> right. And finally, other than fight to the death, as mentioned above, how do you get moved further up in the canon hierarchical structure? A uh, tough one. Um, maybe challenging people to fight to the death is probably not the best start. Well, <clears throat> yeah. That probably concludes the Aiden section. Here we go with one from Commander Curtis. What happens if you get scared half to death twice? If you traveled halfway to your destination twice, would you be there? And we got one from Star Beaver. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Yes. Well, that cleared things up, Doc. Thanks. Uh, from Percat, is a Jaffa cake a biscuit? Indeed it is. I've covered this before. Why? If, if someone passed you a biscuit barrel 
and it had a Jaffa cake in it. Are you going to think anything of it? Hardly comparable to finding an olive in a fruit salad, is it? Well, if someone puts an olive in my fruit salad, I'm putting a tomato in their smoothie. From H.S. Kelvin, what is the fabled golden biscuit that they say you carry? One biscuit to rule them all. Er, okay. Here's one from J. Biff. Is it true your ship is made of tinfoil? <laughs> oh, what a ridiculous notion. Uh, that's a no. Only my mind is made of tinfoil. Alright, here's one from the Wranglin' Panglin'. Can you really be blinded with science, as the old song claims? No, you cannot. However, I would suggest that you can be blind without science. Alright, got a bit of a long multi-parter here from Seth Eridan. How does the canon faction activity fit in with the canon's politically neutral stance? Obviously, it's not favoring any of the superpowers, but just what purpose does it serve towards the progression of science? It seems it could be seen by some as a strong entry into the political arena and kind of counter to the focus on discovery and dissemination of information. Or at the very least, a distraction and diversion of resources. Though perhaps you have a different take. Dr. Arcanon? I'm <clears throat> sorry, I, uh, I think I nodded off during the question. Okay, Cannon is neutral. Neutral means we do not side with factions against each other. We find the infighting that humanity insists on to be counterproductive. However, being neutral does not mean that Canon is not a political entity. Humanity often reminds me of three little pigs in a straw house, arguing among themselves, and all along, the wolf is at the door. Okay, I've got here from Blade Drug. Uh, is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything really 42? If not, what is the answer and why? The answer is obviously not 42. The answer is not a number. The answer is a word. The word is paradox. Your life, my life, our very existence, our ability to ask such far-reaching questions, that's a miracle. Sentient life is the most wondrous thing in the universe. And it's also utterly, utterly, utterly pointless. Die tomorrow, humanity swept from existence tomorrow, and it will all mean nothing in the infinite expanse of time and space. Everything and nothing. All at once. That's the paradox. And that's the meaning of life. Now, if the question had been, why does the answer to life, the universe, and everything make no sense, then we could have started an interesting conversation. Here's one from Commander Cray Cray. How do you see the relations with the Thargoids playing out? Do you think they'll be open to diplomatic relations, or are they just a curiosity to be studied and avoided at all costs, or do you feel another war is inevitable? War is inevitable. I base that bleak assessment not on my limited experience of Thargoids, but on my extensive experience of humans. Alright, there's a few questions in regards to Gnosis and its maiden voyage. Have you anything for us on that, Doctor? I'm afraid uh, that's mostly classified. However, I will warn you, uh, those and those intending to ride along, the first jump of... Uh, well, it will be uh, a bit rough. Uh, can and take no responsibility for a loss of ships or lives. In other words, park inside the ship. I can't say much more, uh, but take my word for it. She's quite something. Thanks, Doc. I'm sure the listeners will follow that advice. And finally, from one Zent, the cyborg pirate. If you had ten seconds to say whatever you want for the whole world, what would you say? Nothing. They wouldn't listen. Not even now. God damn it! Uh, sorry about that, folks. It appears our 
Signal from the Gnosis has been cut off. Um, I'll do everything I can to get that signal back, and hopefully everything is all right. It sounded like <laughs> someone leaned on the red button. Well, that, that's it for me tonight, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone on board the Gnosis is all right wherever they wind up. Um, for Canon Radio and Dr. R. Cannon, this is Commander Larzok signing off. Canon Radio, solving the galaxy's mysteries one biscuit at a time. tired of wrong investments? Do you need financing for a home business or wish to embark on a large corporate project? Is your gin glass half full and your pork pie returns crummy? Whatever your needs, personal or for business, Powell Enterprises has you covered. We offer competitive rates for financing, loans, even ship insurance. Our personal advisors, which you can call on a personal basis, can guide you through the services we offer and tailor the service to your needs. We can offer expert investment guidance with variable rates of APR based on your income and any properties or vehicles you have stakes in. First, second, third and fourth party insurance available for vehicles, properties and your personal devices such as your comms array and handhelds. So for a competitive rate in a competitive galaxy, Trust Powell Enterprises to give you the right deal for the right price.